Welcome to Linda's Corner. My name is Linda Bjork, and today we're going to be talking about modern infertility and maintaining a sense of humor. I'm delighted to welcome special guest Mayrov Zor. Mayrov is an actor, producer, writer, and humorist. She is the creator of Inconceivable, the totally true one-woman semi-fertile quasi-musical, which is a one-woman show that takes a hilarious and honest look at the complexity of modern infertility. You can learn more about Mayrov and her show at her website, mayrovzur.com, and I'll include a link in the description. Welcome, Mayrov. I'm so delighted that you could join with me today. Thank you so much for having me. I am so interested in how this whole conversation is going to turn out. (laughs) To have a combination of infertility, which is one of the most intimately painful experiences that a woman can go through. And then to combine that with having a sense of humor is amazing. I am so interested to see what your story is and how you came to this approach. Sure. Well, um, I will say that I did not come with this approach immediately. Um, uh, Professionally, um, I'm an actor. I'm all into theater. So I'm, I'm an actor, producer, writer, director. Um, and I've been doing that for almost 20 years. And during that time, personally, I was going through infertility, but of course I was the only one in the world going through it. I know, so I didn't right? talk about it with anyone. <laughs> and so that was like my little, you know, secret thing. Everything will be okay. I can't tell anyone. I don't want to, I don't want questions. I don't want, you know, the 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 pity or, or, you know, the, I don't want to feel the guilt and the shame, whatever. I just, you know, kept it locked up, made my husband not talk about it with anyone. And just, you know, that's how it was. Um, And then uh, a few years ago, uh, just actually went through yet another heartbreaking miscarriage. And this time it was kind of like yet another, and it was just, I don't know, I guess maybe time went by or what it was, but my husband once again urged me to talk about it after all with someone, why don't you, you know, professional or a friend and, and I didn't want to ever, but then I said, okay, maybe it is time. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll talk a little bit to my friends about it, but I didn't really know how, like once I made that decision that maybe it was okay to kind of share with them, then I didn't know how I could, because this was such an intimate and painful experience. And I didn't want, you know, the guilt and I, I didn't, I didn't want them to, I don't know. I don't want judgment. I don't know what, it, what it was, but it was just like a weird feeling. And then I said, okay, maybe I'll just tell them. And then I just thought maybe I'll just tell them through humor because, um, I don't know when, when, I'm talking to friends. I often tend to go to humor professionally, anything related to acting and, um, you know, my roles that I've done and and pieces that I've created always veer toward comedy. Uh, So I said, maybe that's how I'll do it. And so I invited some friends over one night to my house. Um, I literally created like a group text and um, I just said, hey, uh, come on over for some cookies and hormones. I don't even remember what I said. It was something weird. And they were, and you know, they know me, so they're like, okay, <laughs> they didn't know what they were coming to. And they came and, um, I literally had a platter of cookies and drinks and stuff on the side. And I sat in front of them and I just told them my experiences for the last however many years. Uh, but I didn't tell it to them as I'm talking to you now, like a story. I did it through silly characters and funny songs and I had props and like, all you know, all this stuff. That's like, that's how I knew how to do it. And, um, and they laughed and, and everything. And, and then when it was over, I was like, okay, now they know, and we can never talk about it again. And I, I literally like went open the door. I, I thought it'd be done. You know, I thought, okay, now they know and we're good and we can move on. You know, I opened the door, literally, I said, thank you for coming. And I went to the door and I opened it and I was waiting for them to shuffle out because it was just, you know, I, I, it was so, I felt so exposed that I just wanted to just like, I guess, be alone. I don't know what it was. And they wouldn't leave. And they just, they stood there and and they were just talking and it, it brought up all this other stuff and all these experiences that they had experienced that were similar. 
And then I was really surprised. I said, whoa. Like I knew maybe little bits and pieces here and there about them. And they maybe, you know, thought something about me, but no one actually really knew everything. And then we kind of, everyone laid it all out that night. Like we were all talking about this. And I said, okay, there's something going on here. When there's a group of women who are supposedly close friends and still not yet really know everything that's going on with everyone. And that got me really curious. And um, they were also like, listen, you have to make this a real show. And I, and I said, I can't make this a real show. Like you guys will come because you're my friends, but people that don't know me, who'd want to, you know, who'd want to see that? Like, you know, me standing there talking about, you know, some woman on the stage talking about her vagina and her you know, <laughs> reproductive health issues. Like who, who'd want to be there? But um I, I was intrigued by the conversation that it sparked. And so I worked on it for about a year and I created a, a solo show and I premiered it. And I was set with knowing that I'm premiering a one night only event. I was sure that that's what it would be, that no one would show interest and it would be a flop and I'll just move on. But I said, you know, once I commit it, I have to get out of my system, I'll do it. And I did it and it was actually really successful. People really it was received really well. And the audience was made up, not of people who knew me. Um, and afterwards people came and they just thanked me and they were, you know, it was anywhere from people who were thanking me, you know, Oh my gosh, our daughter is going through this and we had no clue what she's going through or, Hey, this is what I've been going through for years. And I never managed to tell anyone. Thank you. You know, like couldn't put in words. And I even had like medical professionals in the audience that were like, you know, we deal with patients every day, but we never really thought about that angle and never really thought about that. And so ever since then, I, you know, I, I kept performing it and, and I, I'm just basically kind of on this mission to, to get it out there to more people because it, it just makes, it just makes people talk about this thing that no one really talks about and affects like everyone. So Yes. And how you started saying, you know, nobody, I'm the only person in the entire world that this is affecting. And how many people who are going through this are feeling the same way? It's like everybody else seems to be doing just fine. Everybody else, you know, doesn't have any problems. I am the only one. Right. And, and when you're in that and you're trying to hide for, and it was interesting to hear you try to articulate the why, and you really can't. Because I'm not even sure what it is that I'm afraid of, except that maybe there's something wrong with me. Maybe I am defective. Maybe, you know. So, um, and when you speak and when you share your story, then it gives other people permission to have their own story. That's, they're already experiencing it, but you've given them permission like, oh, my story is okay. I am not flawed. There's not something inherently wrong with me. This is just something, a challenge that I am going through. That's interesting to hear you talk also about the professional angle of them being able to kind of see it from the other side thinking, oh, I never considered that. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's, it's just, it's this thing that, again, people are, you're feeling alone because no one's talking about it. So of course you're the only one because you're not hearing it. That's how, why I felt because we didn't know any of our friends had issues. We knew our friends were having kids. That's all we knew. And we didn't know about, you know, later, especially when the show came out and, you know, people got to know, you know, our story was revealed or whatnot. And we talked about it more. Um, and then they were, you know, sharing their experiences and we're like, we don't do that. Like, you know, it would have helped if we knew. And, you know, even when at first just going to, to get checked to see what was going on was, was strange for me. Cause it was like, what is that? Is that something? Because that's not what I learned in sex ed, you know, <laughs> at school, it's like, that's what happens. You, you know, you put one and two together, you know, that's, that's what happens. You, it happens automatically. It happens even when you don't want it to happen, you have to avoid it. It's going to happen, you know? And this time it's like, wait, it's not happening. So what? It's definitely a feeling of, you know, something's defective, something's not right. And you don't want to be, you don't want to feel wrong. You don't want to feel out of, out of place. So yeah, it's definitely there. Wow. I am so grateful that you are bringing this up and putting things together. 
It is something that affects so many people and and it is hitting home. My daughter has had five miscarriages. She has wow. a tumor on her pituitary and there's, it, we're not, that's not happening. So, um, it's, it's real. It is so yeah. extremely painful. So bringing it up and just letting people know that, Hey, you are not alone. And I think maybe that's the very first message. You are not alone. Yes. And, and then there's some hope and there's all of that. But also, you put it in a language that speaks to you. And that is through humor. Right. And so let's talk about that a little bit. How, how are people receiving this, this topic through the lens of humor? Does it help them just kind of release those? It's, yeah, it's very helpful. I mean, comedy has always been kind of a way of, you know, to, to reflect society and to break the ice and to educate. And this is kind of combining everything. Um, because it's, um, first of all, for people who have experienced or experienced uh, are experiencing infertility, it's great. It's what you said. It, it makes them feel validated. It makes them uh, you know, relate the laughs, you know, I, when I'm performing, I, I can tell, you know, sometimes the laughs are that much louder and that much more, you know, magical because, oh my God, that's me. Or, oh my God, yeah, that happened. And, you know, so it's just like when you're laughing at something you see that you relate to, it's just that much funnier. Um, so that's the first thing. And then, um, for people who have never heard of infertility, which, Fortunately for, for people, <laughs> there are those that haven't heard about it, but at least it makes them understand this thing. Like, what is it? And, and if it is something that they've heard about, they actually now know what it really means. Because, um, I, you know, I once talked about it when the show premiered, uh, someone had asked me, well, it's, you know, it's nice that you're talking about infertility, but everyone, you know, it's something that a lot of people experience. So, you know, what's so special and a lot of people know what that is. And I said, well, okay, maybe nowadays, actually, a lot of people do hear these terms, IVF, uh, you know, uh, infertility, they do hear these little, you know, they become kind of buzzwords, but they don't really know what that entails. Mm -hmm. um, they don't know the roller coasters of emotions and, and hoops you have to go through and, you know, all the, all the weight and, and the complexities of everything. And, um, so this show kind of brings that on, um, but in a, in a lighter way, because I mean, just like I couldn't tell my story, you know, I didn't want, I didn't want to, I guess, delve into the, to the bad part of it and the, and the heaviness. So I did it lightly um, that's the same as someone like learning about it. I think it's more, uh, accessible when it's light and, and relatable and, and accessible and funny. Um, because then it's like, cause, cause it is, I mean, and fertility is, is not funny at all. Uh, but making it funny is, is letting it kind of be there to, to, to be kind of, you know, um, understood. It's like, you know, I've, I've been saying, People that are inside infertility can't really explain it. And people that are outside infertility can't really understand it. So this comedy kind of like bridges the gap and um, lets people kind of understand what's going on. And, and first and foremost, I think this show also shows that everybody's going through something, whether it's infertility or not. Everybody's got that thing that they're probably not talking about. And it's okay. And they don't have to talk about it. It's just something we need to be aware of so that we're a bit more tolerant to one another. We're a bit more understanding. Um, and that's, you know, part of the, the power and magic I love about theater. It kind of makes you more um, understanding of, of human nature. So, yeah. Oh, I love that. I know some of the, the reviews describe your show as edutaining. Yes. So it is entertaining. But it's also educating. And I love how you described it as bridging the gap. Yeah. And yeah. also when you talk about the idea that not everyone can share their story, maybe they're not in a place where they can share your story, but you doing it openly and publicly and with this humorous twist allows them to vicariously share their story. 
Right. So it is a release for them as well. That's yeah. so clever. And I love the name, <laughs> Inconceivable. It makes me think of Princess Bride. Inconceivable. <laughs> I know. It's true. Right. Um, but, but yeah, and, and I've had, you know, people in my audiences, um, that said, you know, oh my gosh, we've been going through this and never, we're never able to talk about it. Thank you for putting it into words. We're sending our parents to see this. <laughs> so it's kind of like their way of being able to explain it to people that they don't want to really talk about it with, but it's just like, Hey, go see that show and, and you'll get it. So it's like, it, it's I, I like that it does that service because um, for this particular topic, I know that it's just, it's so, so complex and so, you know, um, also non-discriminating. Like, you know, this is something that can affect anyone. It doesn't matter, you know, your background, your age, your race, your religion. I mean, you know, wherever you are in the world, it it's kind of like this, this, you know, universal, unfortunate, universal thing that's happening now in the modern world. And yet people aren't really talking about it as they should. Um, not that I'm, you know, nudging people to to talk about things that, as you said, maybe they're not ready to talk about. But I think that, uh, you know, if we do bring it up a bit more to um, people's awareness, things will change for the better, um, whether it's, you know, from from policies to to just general attitudes of like, you know, a, a, a boss and an employee to, you know, like it, it really, the, it, it, this affects so much in a person's daily life. It's just like, uh, indescribable. So yeah, it's, it, I, I would, I would love for that to kind of continue this conversation that just recently started. Um, but yeah, back when I was starting, I didn't know anybody <laughs> that was talking about it. So Right. And you are a trailblazer here, a pioneer in opening <laughs> minds as you yeah, go. No. And you have, I'm sorry, performed this in, in different countries as, as well, yes. right? Have you noticed a cultural difference between the way that different, uh, different cultures handle this topic? Um, well, yes and no. Um, so I uh, performed this uh, originally. It premiered in Israel, uh, where I was, where I had experienced all my uh, infertility stuff at the time when I was living there. Um, and I performed it also in the U.S. And um, I see from people that I've connected to around the world that most of the experiences are the same. It's it's pretty much, um, unfortunately. <laughs> So, but it's pretty much the same from all the little nuanced, you know, uh, sentences that may be tactless that people uh, hear, they hear it all over the world, uh, to, you know, uh, bedside manner to, you know, um, all the, all these things the, one of the main differences I found, uh, at least, you know, technical differences, I, I think is, uh, the financial issue, which, uh, you know, on top of everything, this whole emotional and, and physical drain, um, on top of that, there are many countries that you also have this financial burden that you have to think about and go through. And that is just, um, it's just, it's so much, it's, it's basically too much, you know, to, to have that, to have on top of that people go into, you know, some sort of financial crisis and figure out where they're going to get you know, they already have to figure out where they're going to get their emotional and physical strength for this thing. Now they have to figure out where they're going to get the money to do this thing that is supposed to come naturally to people. So it's, you know, it's, it's quite mind boggling. Absolutely. And this whole thing goes back to your comment about how this is so universal, um, that it affects everyone. And your comment that People say the same inconsiderate things. Can you yes. help us learn what what is an appropriate response? Because sometimes people try to be helpful, and it's so not that. Oh, totally. I have a whole song in it in my show. <laughs> I, I, I do. I actually collected a bunch of statements that people that I remembered people actually telling me, and I created a song out of it. Um, and I'm sure there are many more, uh, but, uh, but yeah, there are many techless things like, you know, one of the biggest ones, oh, just relax and it'll happen. 
you know, these things, you just want to like slap someone. Um, but I think, you know, one of the biggest things for someone, if, if they, you know, do know, um, someone that's going through or they understand that they want to be there for someone else, that's just, it is to be there and let them know that you're there for them. And, you know, whenever they're ready to talk about it or not, and you're just there and you're there for whatever they need. And if you may not understand what they're going through, you can say that you don't understand it, but you know, you're there. And it's just like a basic, you know, friendship, family dynamic. You want to be there for the person that needs whatever the assistance is, even if you don't understand it. So I think that's the most important thing. Sometimes I think when we hear someone's problem or struggles, thing there's this little mental shift that says, oh, I'm supposed to solve that. Yes, and, definitely. And, it's natural. And we need to kind of, you know, take a deep breath and know they're not asking me to solve their problem. They're asking me to love and support them. Um, so yeah. I, we can't solve other people's problems. And right. these things are, are challenging. So that yeah, is an but excellent specifically, reminder. yeah, and specifically with infertility, though, I know for me, um, I would love, I would have loved to have someone say, you know, I'll be there for you. But uh, I think it's also important that, again, you don't have to jump and try to solve their problems. But with, with infertility, sharing your own experiences, or your own related, uh, you know, story not to solve it, not to say, oh, well, my sister's cousin's hairdresser's dog walker uh, did this and she got pregnant. <laughs> not, not that way, but saying, you know, um, wow, you know, I experienced miscarriage. Did you know, or I experienced uh, this, or I heard that so-and-so experienced and I, and I just, I, I can't believe how hard that must be and how it must feel. Um, you know, sharing that is actually, for me at least, it, it, it was helpful because it, Again, it made me le feel less alone because I thought, again, no one else experiences this. So uh, when you hear even something remotely close to what you were going through, it was like, oh, okay, I can, I can, I, that I can understand. Okay, someone else going through some. Okay, that. Okay, I'm not, I'm not this, you know, freak of nature. <laughs> so it's, mm -hmm. you know, it's unfortunate, but it's that's how at first it feels. So yeah, it's um, it's very helpful, mainly to know that you have people there and, and willing to listen to you rant or, you know, go on or just be there even in silence. That's just the, that's just the helpful thing. Okay. That's excellent advice. So how, where are you performing your show? How often, if somebody wanted so, to go, what, where yeah. would they find you? Um, unfortunately the pandemic was, uh, brought a, a whole tour of mine to a, a complete halt. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, that, that was, uh, insane. Uh, but I had converted to, um, virtual performances oh, right now. I'm slowly getting back to, yeah, I'm slowly getting back to in person. Um, but I am kind of doing hybrid because there are, um, I, I perform my show sometimes at, uh, like private virtual events and fundraisers and also even for, you know, private events for, for people that are not doing anything specific, but want to see the show. So I do that virtually and, uh, in-person shows that are, uh, for the public, I will have dates available for, um, summer shortly. So I'm working on finalizing those and hopefully that'll be out soon, uh, in the U S. So, yeah, that would be great. So if I'm hearing correctly, even your virtual shows are live. Is that correct? Yeah, I have different versions. I have um, a virtual version that is live. It's just like we are right now, but I perform the show. Um, of course, it's not the same uh, magic as in person, but it does allow me to do a bunch of cool stuff that I can't do uh, on stage. So, so it's a nice uh, change. And another version uh, of the virtual is that I, I do a live streaming of a pre-recorded live performance. So uh, you get to see me on stage and you hear the audience. Uh, but it's just not happening live, but it's a streaming event. So it's the same show, just um, kind of different formats. Excellent. And again, they can find that on your website, correct? Um, yeah, any information. And of course, um, everyone should feel free to reach out to me. I'm, I'm very uh, responsive. So anywhere through, you know, website, email, social, I answer. And you know, I'm happy to hear from people, even if they just want to say, Hi, I'm there. So. 
Thank you. And Mayrav, may I ask, where are you on your journey? Are you still without children or are you no no so we have Do you we have... have one daughter oh uh, congratulations yeah thank you uh it, it took a while uh with that it's an it's part of the show that i talk about but our main uh infertility issues were actually after when we were trying to conceive for a sibling um which is called secondary infertility actually which is the whole other issue by the way that there are I just want to stop and talk about that because there are a lot of people going through secondary infertility as well, which basically means um, you have a child already, you were able to create that naturally, but now it's a problem of having uh, more children. Um, and so secondary infertility affects uh, also many, many, many people from all walks of life. And it's kind of... Um, Difficult also in a way, I don't know if I should say more difficult, but it's also difficult because you're like, wait, but I'm, I'm too fertile to be like the infertiles, but I'm not infertile enough to be like the fertiles. And it's you're, like, you feel like you're kind of like in this middle thing and this middle ground of like, like this weird purgatory of like, I don't know if I can, you know, dare I say anything? Am I not thankful? Am I, you know, how dare I speak out about, you know, more children and already have one and there are other people trying to get there first. And, um, but again, I think people that, um, learn a bit more about, you know, infertility and, and meet other people. Like I've, one of the big privileges of the show was to meet people that have gone through it. You just learn that the path to parenthood is so wide and varied now. There's so many different ways to get there. If you do get there, there are also paths of, you know, going child free and just all the paths are not linear and different and it's all okay. (laughs) And it's all fine. So, um, yeah, I think, um, that that was also important, but yeah, that's where we are right now. And, um, so we have one child and we're good with that. You know, we're, we weren't successful and, and, uh, creating a sibling. And, um, I mean, I'm telling you actually now that we're good with that, but yes, there are days where I have, you know, <laughs> immense breakdowns and guilt and, and PTSD and all that. I'm not going to lie. That is, you know, that's, I, I realize that's going to be forever, but you know, it is what it is. Um, and you know, and that's okay too. Yeah. I, I yeah. don't think being okay with this means that it's, that it doesn't matter to you if that right. makes sense. Because right. it does matter to you. And I mentioned my daughter and she has the secondary infertility as you. She was able to have two beautiful children before all everything fell apart. Um, but she really wanted three. And 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 mourning the absence of this unborn child is as painful as grieving a loss and, and going through that process. But you do have right. the she does have the consolation that, you know, at least I have these two beautiful children. Yeah. Um, and there are unfortunately people who are not able to have, have any, but I'm grateful for adoption. I'm grateful that there are other options that we can, um, fulfill that, that innate need in women to be, uh, to, to mother and to help other people. And what you're doing is a form of, of mothering, if you will, in, in helping people to be able to navigate their challenges. Yeah. So that's a beautiful thing. So thank you for what you're doing and for becoming an advocate for something that is so important. And it is, it is truly intimately, it is so deep. There's something, a drive in us that is, this is something that we desperately want. It's our heart's desire. And when things um, don't work out, oh, how wonderful to have someone say, I understand. Yeah. I've, yeah. I've been there and you are not alone. Yes. It's completely, uh, it's, it's so important. So very important. Yeah. So thank you for being brave enough to text your friends and put on a show and That's start true. this whole ball rolling. I, I appreciate you and what you're doing. Thank you so much. In closing, I'd like to share a quote by Hugh Sidey. He said, a sense of humor is needed armor. Joy in one's heart and some laughter on one's lips is a sign that the person down deep has a pretty good grasp of life. 
Today, I invite you to look for humor in the challenges that you're facing so that your grasp of life can include joy and laughter. See you next time on Linda's Corner. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode of Linda's Corner, please share and subscribe to help us reach new listeners. I also invite you to check out my nonprofit, Hope for Healing, at the website hopeforhealingfoundation.org for free ebooks, free audiobooks, and other free resources to help increase happiness, build confidence and self esteem, strengthen relationships, manage stress, and calm feelings of depression and anxiety. I also invite you to grab a copy of one of my books, like Crushed A Journey Through Depression, or Amazon bestseller You Got This an action plan to calm fear, anxiety, worry, and stress. See you next time on Linda's Corner.